So if you haven't connected your accounting yet, which I imagine that's why everyone's here, your page will look like this. And to find it, I'm just on the left um, in the options. I clicked accounting. It's kind of near the middle of the page, like towards the bottom. Um, and so we can either get started or if you're not the right person from your team to set this up, you can select someone else to set it up. Hopefully you're the right person. Um, that's hopefully why you're here. But if not, you can invite your bookkeeper or an accountant or someone like that from the team here. Or if you don't see them, you can just add them with that plus sign. But assuming everyone is the right person, we're going to click get started. And so we'll be connecting with um, Universal CSV. So I'm going to search. Let's see um, our examples. Um, hmm. Let's go with. We can go with Advance. Let's see if that works. Um, and sometimes Ramp will recognize it if you've um, uploaded before, but sometimes it doesn't. It kind of just depends. My account is like a fake company, so it's not recognizing anyone right now, but very much a legit accounting provider. It's just not connecting, but we'll select that and then it'll bring us here. And so once we're here, we have one required step and then some optional steps. So the one thing that we require from you is your chart of accounts. Um, and so we're gonna click into this and where it says import chart of accounts, we'll download that template and then fill it out. And the most important thing here to know is that you cannot have any duplicates. So from this, we just need the segment ID and the name, but there cannot be any duplicates. So if anything has um, like the same name or the same ID, you'll just wanna modify it slightly so that nothing is the same because if there are any duplicates, the um, upload and then eventually the export of the universal CSV will not be successful. So this is just really, if you take one thing away from this little first section of the session, um, no duplicates amongst segment ID and name. But like I said, we'll download that template and then we'll fill it out with just those two fields and then we'll upload our um, completed template. So let me upload this right now. Give it a sec to load. All right, so I've uploaded my example chart of accounts. And as you can see, none of my segment IDs are the same. They're all different numbers. And then none of my names are the same either. They're all different. So no duplicates. I'm gonna hit save and continue. And from there, I could be done. This green button, I can now click it. I wasn't able to previously. Now I can click it. I could start coding. I could be in my um, accounting transactions, be done. So the only required step is importing that chart of accounts. But we have these optional steps to add um, additional fields. So if I wanted to import my vendors, I could do that. And I would click that. And it would be the exact same steps. So again, downloading that template and then filling it out with the vendor account names and the IDs, making sure nothing is a duplicate, nothing is the same, um, and that everything is slightly different. So I could download that template and then I'll upload my completed template. So I'll do so right now while it loads. Okay, and so as you can see, all of my IDs are different. None of the numbers are the same. And then all of my um, vendor names are different as well. So as you can see, all of these businesses are different. No duplicates. Just saying it for emphasis. And then I could save and continue. And I could be done there. Since the chart of accounts is the only required step, I could be done with my vendors. But if I want to import additional fields, such as customer codes, job codes, project codes, um, conferences, anything like that, you can do locations here. So I'll do locations as our example. So I'm gonna name the field locations. And then um, from there, you'll notice that there's this option to toggle on required for export. And so pay attention to this. I'm gonna talk about it more in a few minutes and I'll be like, remember when I said toggle on required for export? So I am gonna to toggle this on to show you what that looks like in our example. This is optional. You don't have to toggle this on, but if you leave it off, it will not be required for the export, which means when you're coding, you don't have to select the location. But since I'm toggling it on and I am requiring it for the export, before I'm able to export a transaction, I have to select that location. So hence, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's required for me to be able to export. So I am toggling that on. So when I show, okay, this is what it looks like when you toggle it on, that's what that will mean. So again, very straightforward. You just name it, decide about that. 
And then you download the template and again, fill it out with just the IDs and the field names, but no duplicates. So I will upload my locations. Just takes a second to load. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, great. So as you can see, that worked and all of my IDs of my locations are different and all of my names we chose um, like New York City areas, all of those are different as well. So I can hit save. I could do save and add an additional field or I could just save. For there, we'll stop with just that chart of accounts, vendors and locations. But if I wanted to keep adding additional fields, I could do so there. But for right now, we'll just hit start coding expenses. So this will just take a second to get me into my page. Okay, great. So now we are in the transactions page and I'll give everyone about a minute to do so if you're following along. If you're not following along, just hang tight. Okay, we'll keep going now. Um, great, so once we're in this page, there's a few things we need to do to continue setting it up. So we're gonna click settings in the top right. And again, I'm just in accounting on the left still, kind of in the middle bottom of the tab. So I'm gonna click settings. And so um, also, if you were at platform overview, it's fun to point out what the um, company, the fake company that I have. So today it's different, it's a pie luncheonette. So I've you know never been to one of those because a pie restaurant is super specific, but I would love to. Um, and I know Rohana, my colleague, is a huge dessert lover, so I know she would love to go to that too. But anywho, that's my fake company for today. So the first thing that we're going to click into in settings, so again, settings, and then default accounts. Um, and this is where we'll choose all of these different accounts that we'll be working with. So this first one is that primary um, payment account. And for today, I'm just going to use fake account names and fake account numbers because this is a fake company, but of course you'll use your real ones and what you use will matter. But usually I can just type in like name and one, two, three, four, and that will work for our demo purposes. So I'm choosing that checking account and then the name and ID number. And then this credit card liability account, this is super important. Um, we typically recommend naming this something like ramp card. You could go as far as to say ramp credit card liability account makes it a little bit longer for you. So you might as well just shorten it to ramp card. But this um, is where all of the transactions that are on your ramp cards and associated with ramp will be reflected in your ERP with this account. So super important um, to set this up, know what it's called, know that these transactions are associated with ramp. And again, we'll just give it an ID. And then cash back. So um, we offer 1.5% uncapped cash back on every transaction. So pretty sweet. And you need somewhere for all of this to accumulate. And you need to know it's different than your business's other income and other revenue. So we'll call it um, we'll call it other income for today. But we can uh, call it other. We can call it other income. We can call it miscellaneous. We can call it miscellaneous income maybe something else if you have another example, but anything that will differentiate it to you so you know exactly where your cash back um, lives. Okay, and then we'll just give it um, an ID. And then if you plan on doing reimbursements with Ramp, same thing, so we'll just stick with that same checking account that we called one, two, three, four, and name, and then we'll need an AP account for those reimbursements. And then if you plan on doing bill pay with ramp, same thing, we'll need to select that account. We'll stick with that same checking account. And then we will do one, two, three, four, just for simplicity sake. Um, and then we'll need that AP account for bill pay as well. So we'll just do AP, what did we call it? Uh, one, two, three, four, great. So these are all of our default accounts. You'll have your primary payment account. You'll have that credit card liability account, which we're calling it ramp card. And that's to track all of your ramp um, expenses. Then we'll have that cash back account that today we're going to call other income. And that is for your cash back. 
And then um, if you plan on doing reimbursements, you'll have that account as well as the AP account. And then if you plan on doing bill pay, you'll have that um, same checking account as well as the AP account for bills. Great, so we'll hit save changes. Awesome. So I'll give you a few seconds to do so. If you're following along, if not, again, just hang tight. Okay, great, so we can keep going. But again, if you have any questions, feel free to put those into the chat. Um, so now we're just in our general accounting tab and these are all of our transactions. And so right now we have 369. I guess that's not a crazy number to sort through, but there are likely times in your month when you have thousands and thousands of transactions here. So much like the regular transactions page, we have the ability to search and filter through all of these transactions here. So if we hit search and filter, we can go by a specific dollar amount. We can go by a specific card merchant. So if I click that and then I go to um, Trader Joe's, let's see if I, okay, bad example. I don't have any um, fake transactions there, but if I go to, uh, okay, um let's find one that actually has them if i go to home depot nope okay well bad example we'll find a different merchant that has them um or i can go by a specific card holder if i want to see all of um jeff great he has transactions okay phew. if i want to see all of his transactions i can look at them here um if I want to look at a specific department, so I want to see all of my engineering department's transactions, I can look at them this way. So very similar to um, how you search and filter in the transactions tab, but these are just the ones that need to be um, coded and moved over to your accounting system. Awesome. And then these buttons are great to be aware of as well. You can go by specific transaction date, so your current statement or last month, anything like that. And then here, if you hit customize columns, this is where you can say what you view and don't view. So if for some reason I wanted to get rid of this um, dollar amount over here, I could go to custom columns and unselect amount, and then it would disappear from my view. But I'll leave dollar amount. I want to see that for today, but this is just nice to be aware of as well. Okay, great. So now we're going to talk about how to code our expenses, and there's a few different ways to do that. Um, when you're looking at all of your transactions, um, you can see that I cannot select these check marks over here because when I hover over it, it requires um, some different fields. And so for this, it requires the both accounting locations, which I said when we toggle this on, remember that I can't do anything until I've selected this or my accounting category, because those were the two fields that I required. Accounting category is always going to be required, but I toggled on that additional field of locations as required for the export. So for example, let's go through one of these. If this is a restaurant, this is a lunch with a new hire. Great. Let's say that is meals. So that's the category. If I want to select it for the individual transaction, I could do so there. And now that's been coded. But since I require that additional field of locations, I have to select one here too. So let's say they're in the Chelsea office. Now I can mark that as ready to export. So that goes up to the top. But this would be a little tedious to have to select um, the category for every single transaction. Like that is not, we're trying to eliminate you having to do that because it's a little tedious right now, 300 something transactions. But for when you have thousands and thousands, we're here to help automate that. So let's find one and um, make some rules together. So this is where we can start automating this. Um, okay, great. We have two Uber um, transactions right here. So let's click into this and let's say whenever my team spends on Uber, I know that it's for travel. So if I could uh, go down and find my travel category, I could select that for the individual transaction and be done from there. Or I could hit this lightning bolt right here where it says create rule and click on that. And so instead of just doing the individual transaction, I could knock out 17 unsynced transactions right now. So I could say, okay, anytime the transaction includes the merchant of Uber, I will associate that with my accounting category of travel. So Uber, 
goes to travel. If I want to make that rule, I can hit create rule. And then, great, it's applied to both of those. So if I hadn't required location, this category, to be required for my export, I could mark them both as ready to go. But since I did require that in um, when I was setting it up, I need to select these offices. So let's just say that's the Dumbo office, and let's say that's the FIDI office. Boom, boom, mark those both as ready to export. And then this little number at the top is growing as I'm marking those off. So that's how you can do it at the merchant level. Let's say, um, hmm. let's say I have a lot of these SaaS and software um, subscriptions here. I have a lot of software charges and, uh, or actually wait, let's say, let's find a different example. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, let's say um, DoorDash. I could make the rule just set DoorDash and say that's meals. But let's click on the lightning bolt and see the options. So I could say, okay, whenever DoorDash is the merchant, that's going to be associated with my accounting category of meals. But we could take it one step further. And instead of saying just DoorDash, how about any time Ramp recognizes the category as restaurants, we'll associate that with the accounting category of meals. So instead of just like four transactions or just a couple here and there, we can say any transaction that has the ramp category. So that's kind of like the most overarching, um, inclusive category to kind of gather everything. And then from there, you can narrow in on specific things. But that kind of general broad category of restaurants, let's say anytime it's restaurants, that will be associated with the accounting category of meals. So I can create that rule. And now that will apply to both of those. Um, and that will also apply to Starbucks because it's considered restaurants. It'll also apply to these two restaurants right here. So from there, I just need to select those um, locations because I required that for the export. So for the sake of our example, I'm just going to select various ones. Um, let's say Dumbo and then let's say Jersey City. Boom, boom. And then let's do one more. Let's do this last DoorDash one and say this is um, Harlem. Great. So now that number at the top is growing. I have nine up there. And I did it at the merchant level of Uber. I did it at the category level of restaurants. We can also do it at the card level. So as you can see, I have a lot of these SaaS and software card um, transactions. So let's click one and let's say um, Asana is a software that we use. So let's say, oh, whoops, wrong thing. Let's say I want to choose this to be dues and subscription. So if I click this lightning bolt, hold on, I want to find a specific um, card. They always, since it's um, a demo account, it always gets changed around. Okay, great. Perfect. So uh, Zoom, I selected um, a transaction that Zoom was the merchant. So I could do it at the merchant level. I could do it at the category level. Or I could say, okay, Anytime that this specific SaaS card is used, so this is the card that my team uses to make all of our SaaS subscriptions, all of our um, software subscriptions, any dues of that nature, um, that will be associated with my accounting category of dues and subscriptions. So I can create that rule, add it. So that's the card level, anytime that ramp card is used. So now it should apply to a handful of these um, subscriptions. Okay. Uh, great. Like there's another one that was on that card. So I'll select those locations. Boom. And then where is that other one? Uh, it was this zoom one. Let's say that's for C city. Great. So I can do it at the card level. Um, I can do it at the merchant level, the category level and the card level. Let me click into another one and show you what else I can do. So let's say, um, Delta, let's say that's travel. So when I click show more options, those are the additional options. So Delta, I can do it at the merchant level. I can do it at the category of fuel and gas, or maybe that category is um, travel or anything like that. That could be associated with the accounting category of travel. Um, department, if maybe one of my company departments only spins in a certain way, I could code it that way. Again, like that is probably not... Um, 
the most popular use case because likely your departments will be spending in multiple ways, but maybe you have one department that only spends on a certain category, so you could set up that rule that way. Maybe a San Francisco office is the only location that travels, so you could set it up that way. Again, maybe not the most common scenario, but really great option to be able to go by location to accounting category or that card level, like I mentioned. So let's say we do just merchant for this one. Mm -mm -mm. And then it's applying and great. And now I'll just select um, an office. Great, so those are the ways that you can make rules within the transactions. So once you've made these rules, hopefully your um, coding gets a little bit easier and it starts to automate and go faster. And then you are getting all of these out of this page and into this export all button. And so the goal for this page is to make it blank at the end of month. And that means that all transactions have been coded and then successfully exported out of ramp into your accounting provider. Once you export a transaction, it will disappear from this page, which is awesome. That means it's coded and that means it's been exported to your accounting provider. But I want to mention that Ramp will not um, initiate any of this export. So you will help with these rules, will help automate this. But once we're in this export button, you must initiate that export. And that's just because you know how your company should be spending. If things look right, if things are fraudulent, like only you know your actual financials um, or like how people should be spending within those. Um, so... Again, I clicked export just to show you where I am. And once you're in this review and export page, it's the last, last stop, basically. You really want to make sure everything looks good to go because, like I said, once they leave ramp, you don't have to take any action within the ERP. They uh, export fully coded and you're good to go. However, once they export, you can't bring them back into ramp. So you just want to make sure everything looks good to go. And so this one, somehow this slipped through or maybe I clicked it by accident or something and it's missing an accounting category. So this is a great example of something I wanna uncheck to bring back into my transactions page. So if I uncheck it, great, that marks it as not ready and it will go back into this transactions page. But from there, if the rest of these look good, I might be ready to export them. And so you can mark, um, I'll go back to this page really quick to show you. You can mark the singular transactions as ready, or you can click this button over here. If they were all coded, which they're not, since we've been doing that at the individual example, uh, individual level for this example, I can mark them ready there. But once I'm in this export, if they all look good to go, then I'll press export. And so you can either export them as journal entries, or you can export as a CSV file. And so the main difference there is that um, journal entries will show all fields and will give a bit more of a comprehensive view of your um, accounting export. It'll show the credit and debit of all transactions. The CSV export is just a little bit more limited um, and it just shows the credits of every transaction. So it just depends on what you want and how um, detailed you want your export to be. Um, but great, so I'm gonna click export journal entries and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for just a moment to then show you my journal entries export. Okay, so now let me double check that you can see this. Yep, okay, great. So you can see this now and it's descriptive. Um, this is the journal entries export. So you have the date, time, all of that, the merchant, the user, all of that information. And then as we continue scrolling, you have much more detailed information. Um, also important to note that you have the link to all of the receipts, which is awesome. Um, location, memo, keep going, keep going, keep going. And then here's where you have that credit and debit of all transactions. So if it were just CSV, you would only, um, you wouldn't have that debit, but this provides debit and credit of all transactions. Great, keep going, all this additional information. Great, so that is the journal entries export. So I will go back to my ramp page really quick. Um, great, and so a few more things to point out. Um, if we click this three little dots right here and then click export history, 
So in my fake account today, I'm James, but that is the export that I just did. Obviously, if it's your company or a real company, it will have the full history of all of your exports. So that is where you can find your export history. Um, and then a few other things. Um, if we go into settings and then go into accounting automation, you can also create rules here. So you can create them at the transaction level and the, how I just showed you creating it at that category level, that merchant level, that card level, or even department or location if you would like to. But you can also create them here. So we can say, okay, if the ramp merchant is, you know, Airbnb, that's going to be associated with the accounting category of travel. And so I could create the rules here and hit save rule. Same for ramp category to accounting category. Um, if the ramp category is airlines, so American, United, Delta, Spirit, anything like that, if that's the ramp category, it'll be associated with the accounting category of travel. And I can go through them here and make the rules too. So again, just to point out where I am, hold on, I'll let it apply that update. Just to point out where I am, I'm in settings and then accounting automation. And so I can create the rules here rather than at the transactions page. It's really what you prefer, where you prefer working out of. Um, and then two more things to point out. Um, if you would like to download your receipts, we get questions about that a lot. So in order to do so, you'll go to expenses and then transactions. And then this little arrow right here will allow me to download my receipts. So I could hit download transactions and then I could download a zip, a zip file of all of my receipts. And it's really awesome. It'll break it out by card holder. So super um, nice for you to see. So I could do that or I could do a specific date range and say, OK, I want to see my previous statement and all of the receipts from that. I could do that date range there and then click download transactions and download that zip file of the receipts. And then lastly, if you want your employees to be able to code, you will need to enable this. So if you came to the platform overview session, I would have skipped this and said, okay, we'll get back to that in the accounting session. So this is us getting back to that in the accounting session. Um, we'll go to settings and then expense policy. And we'll click into transaction requirements. And we'll click into general expenses. And so here, I said, you know, we made those rules for receipts. We said maybe they're just required for transactions above $75. Maybe the same for memos. They're just required for transactions above $75. But this is where we will select if we would like our employees to choose the accounting um, categories, locations, vendors, so on and so forth. So let's say, okay, we will require them to select an accounting category for transactions above $75. Maybe we don't require the other ones for right now. So we'll hit save changes, notify our employees. And that is how you um, allow your and um, employees to code. Great. Go back to accounting really quick. And that pretty much brings us to the end of our session. So it is very um, straightforward. Hopefully you think so. And once you're in the, um, like once you have your chart of accounts pulled in and you're set up and you're like good to go, it's pretty easy to just continue making these rules based on how you spend and how you want people to code. Um, but that pretty much wraps up the session. 